I spent about 300 hours making an animated film inside Blender and I nearly broke my neck doing so. If you haven't watched it, my animated movie Mecha Flora is out now to watch on YouTube. And it's been a long process making this film. I made it in my spare time over the last six months. And in this video, I'm gonna share that process with you. And I'm gonna go over the general process of making an animated movie in Blender from start to finish. And we're also gonna talk about the challenges and pitfalls uh, you might be facing when doing so. So the first phase of your film, it's going to be the concepting phase. Right now, there's nothing yet. There's no assets, there is no story, there is nothing. So you have to make it up. You'll have to figure out some basic things before you start writing your story. And the first thing you have to answer is, what are you capable of in Blender? And how long are you gonna work on it? I would highly advise setting a deadline for yourself. It might be a month in the future or six months. Maybe you wanna work on your short for a whole year. That's all fine, you can choose it for yourself, but set a deadline and stick to it. Having a deadline for your film not only motivates you to work on it, but it also contains the film so it doesn't get too big and it's left unfinished. That's good and all, but obviously some films are just gonna be harder to make than others. So how are you gonna figure that out? There are a lot of factors that play into this, uh, but here are some things to consider. One, how long is your film gonna be? More film equals more footage, uh, and that's gonna be more work. Second one is art style. Some art styles are just way easier than others. This is also pretty easy to grasp. A photorealistic art style is gonna be much harder to create than a simply shaded one. The third one is more specific. It talks about the things that are in your film. Are there a lot of locations? Are there a lot of characters? Characters take a lot of time to make. Are there a lot of props? Is there a lot of detail in your shots? Figuring these things out beforehand is very important because it's going to prepare you for the amount of time it's gonna to take to create your film. Taking Mechaflora as an example, uh, it's a film set in one location. It has one character and the art style is not realistic. It's more like a PS3 or PS4 art style, like a game cinematic. And generally it's not a very detailed piece. And another question to consider besides what do you want to make uh, is what do you want to learn? Blender is such a multifaceted application now. You can focus on so many different areas. You have modeling, texturing, you can do something with grease pencil. Maybe you want to do something very abstract or work with simulations or geometry notes for that fact. That last one was something I wanted to focus on in my film. And it's fine to just focus on the things you want to work on. In the end, it shouldn't really be all about the film you're creating. It should be about the process of creating it. What have you learned during the process? So you're at the point that the characters, the story and the locations are figured out. Next step is to just start building the scenes, right? No, you first make an animatic. An animatic is very similar to a storyboard. It's the most simple version of your animation. I'm talking you tell your story, but with cubes and UV spheres in the viewport. With an animatic, you're gonna figure out your shots, you're gonna figure out your camera angles, and you're gonna figure out the placements of everything in your scene. Now, why is this so important? Well, if you already have your animatic, you can make your edit before even starting on your film. And this is so important because editing is a game of timing. And it's also said that when a film is edited, it's also rewritten for the final time. You might think you've perfectly encapsulated your story inside your head and you only have to bring it out through the Blender scenes, but in reality, it's just not the case. Some things are just gonna feel different once they're in the edit. And you can make the basic changes that are needed to elevate your story without having to throw out a completely finalized shot you might have worked ages on. So yeah, please, please don't skip out on making your animatic. It can be extremely simple. It really doesn't have to look good. It's just so you have an idea of the timing, the camera angles and where the things are gonna be located. So after you've made your animatic, you've got your edit figured out, it's time to start getting into the grind set because you're gonna make the assets for your film.
So let's break down this film for a bit. The animations for the robot was actually made by using a VR system. So in this footage you see me with trackers on, um, even with a headset on. A really cool thing was I would use Blender's VR scene inspection feature and I could actually act out my scenes while seeing the location around me that I made for it. Don't try this at home. Now the second part of the film involved a lot of geometry nodes. If you haven't used geometry nodes or you don't really understand them, uh, it's an amazing feature where you start with a simple shape and based on a few mathematical rules that you set up, uh, you get a very complex shape. So if you've been on the channel for more than a few weeks, you might have seen me cover a few of the node systems that I used in the final film. And this was just me sitting behind my desk at 3 a.m just connecting up nodes and seeing what works. I'll tell you, before making this film, I barely knew how geometry nodes worked. And now they're my favorite feature in Blender. Speaking from my experience, the thing that took me the longest amount of time was the robot character. And I really think characters take up the most amount of time because they just have the most steps involved. You'll have to make a good design for them, then model them, and then maybe you have to do some UV unwrapping or some retopology. You have to make materials for the whole thing and you'll have to rig the character. Not to mention having to animate the character for probably most of your film. If you have more than a couple characters, uh, it's gonna take you a while. That's why I only chose for one character. Uh, I just have one robot and you might say that the plant is a character itself, but it really doesn't work the same way because the plants are just geometry nodes groups. It was a very conscious decision on my part to only have one real character. Another thing I want to share is that you should put as much detail in an object as it gets screen time in a film. That means that if you're making an object but it's maybe in the background for half a second, don't spend much time on it. I could spend a whole afternoon making a high quality model of this Switch controller for instance, but if it's just in the background, it's gonna be dedicated to a few pixels in your final project. So you might well just put a red box there that takes you three seconds and it will look the same. There's a really good video on YouTube talking about this exact topic, I'll link it up here. But yeah, as a general rule of thumb, the more attention an object gets, the more detail it should have. All the materials I made for this film were procedural. I especially had trouble making a good shader for the cave. It took me a while, but eventually I used displacement maps to get these grooves. And later in the film, they actually looked quite good because I had these radial patterns growing out from the center of the flower. And they were mainly illuminated in the cracks of the cave, which was a really cool effect. So the next pitfall I wanna talk about when making your own assets is trying to make everything yourself. I've seen a lot of Blender users that want to make everything themselves and they usually have a good reason for it. Either they want to do it because they learn the steps involved in creating everything or they feel like the final product they make will be more authentic in the long run. Now I'll respect their choice but I'll say this too. It's simply going to take you a lot of time if you choose to do it this way. There are a bunch of places where you can get models, add-ons, even fully rigged characters. And choosing to download something instead of making it really comes down to something I asked earlier in this video. What do you want to learn? There's really nothing wrong with using other people's assets for your own work. That said, you do need to respect copyright. For some things you might need to credit the owner or you might not be able to monetize it. So keep that in mind when downloading your assets. So at this stage you're making your assets you're building your scenes, you're making your animations, and you're nearing the end of your project. And this last part of creating an animated film in Blender can actually be pretty stressful. The thing is because you can do anything in animation, it brings with it its own challenges. And these challenges are often mental. A big one is perfectionism. You could spend a literal eternity trying to improve your shots to the point that your film is not gonna come out. You might have this big idea in your head, this passion project you've always wanted to make, and then you're rendering your first frame and you have this weird sinking feeling in your stomach. That feeling of, it's not there yet. It's not the perfect version of my idea. And it's not easy. There are a lot of projects that just get canned because the artist is like, no, 
not good enough. And I'm gonna say something here that might be seen as controversial, and that is... Finish it anyway! God, I mean, I get it. You want to make the best version of the idea you had at the start. But the reality is just that. You're here now, and this is what you have. And this is why I said at the beginning to set a deadline. Because if you don't have one, it's very easy for your project to just stretch out into infinity and never come out. You'd have spent all this time and energy for a project that never sees the light of day. And honestly, that's just a bigger shame than bringing something out on your current level. Because no matter how good or horribly janky your project is, you're gonna improve anyways. And if you keep just working on the same project trying to make it better, it might actually limit your growth. Sometimes you just have to say, this is what it's gonna be, and hit Control F12. And then your project is rendering. Probably for a few days. So yeah, I'd say use this time to relax, your PC is just cranking out your frames and you finally have time to touch some grass. And if you actually made your animatic, it's very easy, you just replace your animatic shots with the real shots. And there you go, you've just made your first animated movie inside Blender. And if I speak from my own experience, I'm willing to bet that it was quite the journey. Thank you all for watching. Uh, new Geometry Notes tutorials are on the way. I actually have a new Simulation Notes setup coming up and I'm really excited for it. If you are too and you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so, it's free. And you could also like the video or leave a comment. Uh, these things actually help the video get boosted in the algorithm so more people get to see it. So yeah, that's really the easiest things you could do to support these videos. I'll see you all next week and uh, keep being creative. Bye-bye.